Hello Internet, my name is Mikey T and today I'm going to be showing you my mock-up design process using Adobe Photoshop. First thing we're going to do is uh, take our photo of ourselves um, uh, holding, holding nothing because, you know, we don't have the sticker actually printed. There we go. Um, this is the picture we're going to use and uh, we're gonna upload it to Google Drive. Uh, create our file using Photoshop, and then I'm gonna create a 2000 by 2000 pixel, and then we're gonna go get our file from Google, and then drop it in here. Next, we're gonna hold Shift and expand this image. Uh, I like that, that's fine. We're just gonna expand it until it fits the outsides, and then we're gonna put it like right there. I'm actually going to flip it horizontally because I like that better. And as you can see, there's a whole lot of um, lighting, not issues, but there's a whole lot of like very bright lighting coming from my window. And I'm gonna show you how we're gonna make that work for our um, mock-up to make it look a little bit more realistic. So the next thing we're gonna do is drop in our uh, design, a transparent background preferably already created uh, into uh, Photoshop and then we're gonna hold shift and just shrink it to about the size that we want it to be uh, It doesn't have to be perfect right now. Uh, we're gonna name our layers real quick Next thing we're gonna do click on design push control T for transform and then we're gonna hold We're gonna hold control to skew and we're gonna as you can see I'm holding it Slightly to the left. So I'm gonna skew this slightly downwards Like so yeah, it looks good to me. And then now that we have that, um, the next thing you can notice is I still have a shadow at the bottom here, which I must have forgotten. Um, we're gonna take care of that right now. So the way we're gonna do that, we're going to make both of our other uh, layers invisible using these little you know, eye buttons right here. And then we're gonna hold control and click on the actual icon for this layer. All right, we're gonna go to select, inverse, and then um, the fastest way to create a smart object and rasterize it is to use your eraser tool and then just click on your layer and then push OK. And then from there, after we already have it, um, the selection inverse, I'm just going to hit delete. And as you can see, that deleted um, all of my shadows that I have going on down here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to hold control and click on our icon again to select this whole thing, the whole layer here. And we're going to go to select modify expand and I'm gonna expand it by 15 pixels and then we're gonna take our paint bucket tool create a new layer put it underneath we're gonna name this layer sticker and then we're gonna choose our color for our paint bucket and we're not gonna use FFF or white we're gonna actually go down to a little bit off white and then we're gonna just using this sticker layer we're gonna just paint in a white with the paint bucket tool and then after we do that I'm gonna hit control D and then, as you can see, uh, we have our sticker and our design in two separate layers. And the next thing we're going to do, select both of those layers, put it right here, you know about to where you would be holding it. This is probably where I would be holding the sticker, right here. So we're gonna place it down right there. And then we're going to take uh, both of these layers, make them invisible, and then we need this finger as its own asset in order to put these two in front of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our magnetic lasso tool, right click this uh, button and click magnetic lasso tool. And then we're actually going to just select around this right here. And if it starts going all wonky, just click your own point. And then if it's not perfect, that's okay. We don't really need it to be. And then we're going to finish off the selection right there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna fix a little bit of this stuff, holding Alt using the regular selection lasso tool. I'm just gonna fix a little bit of this and make it a little bit better because it doesn't have to be perfect, but the closer it is, the better the final pack is gonna look. So now that we have this selection the way we like it, we're gonna click on our IMG layer, and then I'm gonna hit Control C, Control Shift V to paste in place. And then we're gonna label this finger. And after we've done that, we're going to take uh, holding shift, you're going to select both your design and sticker layer, and you're going to put it behind the finger layer. If we take our move tool, you can see that it's now behind this layer right here, and we're just going to leave it right there. 
And the next thing we're going to address is the fact that this brightness and this saturation doesn't really match the image that we're going for. You can see that my skin sort of has like a yellowish, you know, human <laughs> tint to it, but the light is giving off a bit of a yellow um, glow onto me. So the way we're going to address that is we're going to select only our design layer. We're going to go to adjust hue and saturation, and then we're going to make this a little bit more uh, on the yellow side. This hue, we're going to slide to the left slightly, not too much, don't go crazy with it, but a little bit left. And then we're going to decrease our saturation slightly, and then we're going to decrease our brightness slightly. We don't want to make it look not green anymore, not like the design. We just want to match the lighting slightly more. And then the saturation just makes it look a little bit more like real life and same with the lightness. So we're going to decrease both of those slightly and then we're going to go back into our layer. And as you can see, it, it kind of adjusted the whole layer or like everything. So we're going to right click on this hue and saturation. We're going to click merge down. So now it affected only this layer right here. The next thing we're gonna do is the same thing to our sticker layer. So we're gonna erase everything else. And as you can see, it's right there. Hue and saturation. We're gonna take down the brightness of this. Um, the goal for me usually is to match something that's sort of similar, like my background. My wall is like a white paint. So I'm gonna try to match that a little bit. And then after we get it how we like it, we're gonna erase both of those and then we're gonna do the same thing. Oh, we're gonna leave the sticker layer. And then we're going to merge down. And as you can see, this sticker is looking a little bit more real. And um, so we're actually gonna take both of these layers, now that we have them the way that we like them, we're actually gonna merge them. So now that you can see that this is just one layer and we're going to shrink it just a little bit because it's still a little bit big. Um, I like that right there. And I probably wouldn't be holding it like straight up like that. So we're gonna turn it a little bit to the left, like so. I like that. So now that we have it uh, in the placement that we like, we're actually gonna take um, the sticker layer and we're gonna go to, um, we're gonna click, uh, we're gonna right click on this magnifying glass looking one. This is Dodge Burn and Sponge. Dodge is gonna be your lightness, increases lightness, and burn increases darkness. And I usually like to use these tools for shading. So I'm gonna increase my size slightly on the burn tool and then we're gonna go down here to this, to my sticker layer, and we're just gonna create a little shadow right here where I'm holding it. And you can go as many layers as you like, but I think that looks pretty solid right there. And then as you can see, my finger's also overlapping with this right here. So we're gonna create a little shadow over top of this one as well. And the next thing we're gonna do is address the lightness. So we have a whole bunch of brightness going on here. So we're gonna take our dodge tool, which does brightness, and then we're gonna increase the size. I'm gonna do a 60 or so, which is fine. We're gonna go ahead and feather the edges where it touches the light the most, which is mostly right here. And then as you can see, the light is pretty strong. Like uh, it goes away down here, but the lighting on my face and everything directly facing the light is pretty strong. So we're gonna go over uh, Leo here, uh, just a little bit over his skin and uh, his whole design, just to make it a little bit brighter on him. So the next thing we're gonna do is increase the lightness of his sword a little bit. So we're gonna take our our dodge tool again, and we're just gonna go over his sword a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. We don't want it to completely match the color of the sticker, and that's why we wanna go over. Actually seeing a little bit of the sticker going over my finger. So we're gonna go to the image layer, and then we're gonna take our uh, burn tool once again, and then create this into a smart object, rasterize, and then we're gonna decrease the size of this probably to like a 29. And then we're actually gonna increase the shading behind it. So as you can see, it's creating shade on the sticker and the sticker is creating shade on my finger behind, on my thumb. And there you go.
And this is looking pretty solid, but something I'm noticing is I think the saturation is a little bit too high. So I'm gonna go ahead and decrease the saturation once again and the lightness a little bit more of this sticker. Just because the saturation on the actual image is not that high, that's kind of what we wanna match. So we're gonna merge that down once again. And as you can see, it's looking pretty good. It looks like that took out all the lightness that we did before, so I'm actually gonna redo that. And the last thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create a Gaussian blur over the actual sticker layer. Not by very much, we're only gonna do it by like a 0 0.5. And as you can see, the actual image is pretty pixelated, so if we, we wanna create a little bit of pixelation on the image just so that, you know, it looks pretty similar to the actual image, we're actually gonna do a little bit more. And there we go. After we created that blur, as you can see, it matches this a little bit more. And then the last thing that I did here is I used the smudge tool. We want to remove the sharpness on the very edge. There we go. That looks pretty good. And here is the final product of what we created today. You can find the finished product and any resources you'll need in order to follow the video uh, in its entirety. If you enjoyed this video or learned anything in the process, please leave a like and subscribe to It's Mikey underscore T on all platforms.